So I want to do a series on bowel resections and before I get into the actual surgery itself I want to talk a little bit about a very brief overview, certainly not exhaustive, about the pre-op workup the patient would have had before they got to surgery, the history and physical, the signs and symptoms, and the lab studies that may have been ordered in order to help define what the problem is. So the patient may present in the office with a history of abdominal pain. And since this would be visceral pain, it's not as well differentiated or defined as somatic pain. So the patient may have referred pain, pain and less, uh, the symptoms are more vague as to being able to find out exactly where it comes from. They may have signs of a partial or full obstruction. So what are these signs? The obstruction, if it's partial, there may be some stool being able to get by, but if it's low down, it might be narrower because it's trying to fit through a, a narrowed passage. Or it may be enough of, of an obstruction that the only thing that would get by is some liquid stool and none of the firm. If it's a com complete obstruction, this is going to lead to, if untaken care of, if it's not taken care of, it will lead to what's called megacolon. So what happens is there's a complete obstruction. The body's trying to take care of itself. So it's trying to peristalsis and it's trying to push the stool and in the process of trying to push everything, get everything working with the peristalsis, there's gases collect. The gases don't have anywhere to go and they build up on the proximal side of it. So the colon, which is very flexible, starts dilating and expanding to accommodate the air. As this goes on, if it's untreated, it's going to eventually lead to what's called megacolon. These patients are in excruciating pain you know what gas pains feel like. Well, the reason why they're in pain is because the bowel does not have, the pain uh, sensory is not to touch. The pain results as a result of stretch. So the more stretch and the more dilation you have on the bowel, the more intense the pain becomes. And just like a balloon that's blowing up, this bowel can only take so much and expand so much, and if nothing's done, at some point it will rupture. So these uh, can be emergent procedures that have to be done immediately. The patient may also have a change in their stools. Is it a different shape, a different consistency, a different size, and a uh, dif different frequency? So they may also have blood in their stool. Is it, uh, there may be a cold blood, which is such a scant amount that you can't catch it with your naked eye and they have to have a lab work to pick that up. Or they may have the dark tarry stool which indicates older bleeding from farther up and it has a it really has a bad odor to it and it's kind of sticky and black or does it have the frank ready orange or fresh bleeding which would indicate something lower down and something nearer the the anus it could be a lesion or could it be cancer or could it be hemorrhoid they'd have to rule out what it was or the patient may come in with unexplained weight loss. And this one the doctor might be concerned about because it doesn't mean that there's a cancerous lesion somewhere that's causing this weight loss. They also may have what's called free air in the abdomen. And what this means is, or it's going to be an expanding abdomen. And what this free air means is that there's a perforation in the bowel somewhere from a diverticulum foreign body or something that the air that's inside the bowel is now escaping into the abdomen and escaping faster than it can be resorbed. And as a result, the girth of their abdomen is going to be expanding. And in the old days, they used to actually measure it with a tape measure to see if it was expanding. I have a feeling that nowadays, if they suspected that, they would send them down for a CAT scan or an MRI before um, too long to rule out that being the problem. We actually had, you can have the expanding air the free air in the abdomen from a perforated diverticulum or we had a patient once that had been shot in the abdomen uh, with a BB gun and one of the BBs had perforated the bowel and he had free air. There can be different reasons for that. So on the physical it's going to be a slightly different order than anywhere else in the body. They're going to inspect it first just to look grossly without touching it to see if there is a change in symmetry and anything that they can see that looks off to them. And then the next thing would normally be, be, be palpating, and they're not going to do that because by palpating, they're going to, they may change the bowel sounds, and then that may mess up the accuracy of what's going on in that patient's body. So they're going to do, the next thing they're going to do is aus auscultate. 
and they're going to listen for the borborygmus, the fluids, the air moving, and see if it sounds normal. Or maybe they won't have any sounds at all, and then that could indicate that there's an ileus going on. Then they're going to palpate. They're going to feel. Do they feel a mass anywhere that, that is abnormal or something on the abdomen that doesn't feel right? Is it firmer in one place? Is it softer in another? And then they're also going to uh, finally percuss it. And by percussing it, when they're percussing on one, one area, does that sound dull? If it sounds dull, it may indicate is there a mass or a lesion there? Or if it sounds more tympanic like a drum, you get that if you had the free air in the abdomen. So this can tell them things. Some of the lab work that they're going to order, I'm sure they would do more of a workup than this, but they're going to do a CBC to see what the hemoglobin hematocrit is, to see if there's anemia. If there's anemia, again, why are they losing the blood? Where is it from? Is this indicative of a lesion or cancer or just a benign lesion that's bleeding? They're also going to look at the CBC to see if the white blood count's elevated, if they suspect a perforation from like a ruptured tick or something going on or sepsis going on, then the white count's going to be elevated and that will give them information. And they're also going to do a stool for occult blood just to see if there's any blood that can't be seen with the naked eye. And then if they suspect anything that they need further studies on, then they're going to do a CAT scan um, and and or an MRI to give them a better picture and help them to decide what the correct course of treatment is. Then if it's not an acute inflammatory process like a, a ruptured a diverticulitis would be, ruptured diverticulum leading to diverticulitis, at that point the bowel would be inflamed and they would try to avoid doing a colonoscopy at that point because it's more danger of perforating it. But if it's a non-emergent workup that they're doing and they want to get a better information then they're certainly going to do a colonoscopy to find out where in the bowel the problem is, what it is, and what they need to do about it.